powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm David J. in for Dustin Kleeman. We've had some uh, snow in the Billings area and around the area tonight and part of the same storm on the West Coast. Brett McCurman is going to join us right now to let us know what, what's ahead for tomorrow and, and beyond. Yeah, well, we've got uh, more snow that's falling right now in the uh, Billings area and the uh, surrounding area. The roads are getting slick right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Almanac and uh, show you with our first interstate ICAM. Uh, like I said, we've got some light snow and fog falling. Uh, high today was 29 degrees. The average high is 45 degrees for this time of year. Record high 69 set back in 1994. Record low 13 below set back in 1978. As we look at precipitation 12 one hundredths of an inch of precipitation so far for today and for the month and as you can see we're uh for the year, we're uh, well above our 30 year average. More moisture on the way for tonight throughout to um, tomorrow, and that will extend into eastern Montana as well. We'll have your complete forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Brett. Some tough weather across the country as well. A nasty nor'easter is moving out to sea after battering much of the northeast. Governors of Massachusetts, Maryland, and Virginia have declared a states of emergency. Henna Doba has the latest. A massive cleanup is underway after a powerful nor'easter clobbered the northeast. Officials say more than a million and a half homes and businesses in several states were still in the dark Saturday. Numerous utility poles are down in Watertown, Massachusetts. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty intense. Never seen anything like it. Whipping winds caused havoc in coastal areas from Maryland to Maine. Huge waves from the Atlantic Ocean crashed onto streets, submerging cars. Emergency crews use boats to reach people trapped in their homes by rising flood water. Cars are done for, all our, all our stuff's, to, you know, messed up, but that's, this is all that matters. Police say a little boy was killed when a tree slammed into his home in Virginia. Right now, we're just devastated. He wasn't terminally ill. He wasn't sick. It was a, just a freak accident in the middle of the night that took the baby from us. Upstate New York received 16 inches of snow. Flood warnings remain in effect as the powerful storm moves out to sea, but the headache left behind will be felt for days to come. Airports are working to rebook thousands of passengers who are left stranded during the storm. And Adoba, CBS News, New York. And Amtrak says trains are running on a modified schedule. Getting back to Montana, suburban development and recreational demands are affecting Montana's number one natural resource, water. MTN's Mike Dennison reports. Next week, about 300 meet in Helena for a water summit. You know, of course it's a concern because that's our livelihood. Without that water, I wouldn't be passing this ranch on to this fifth generation. And, and they're banking on that water providing for them also. The state representative Walt Sales farms and ranches south of Manhattan in the Gallatin Valley about 15 miles northwest of booming Bozeman. Sales and other farmers have long-standing water rights, giving them priority on river flow, but they've agreed to keep water in the rivers for other users during the driest months of summer. It's these type of local agreements that officials hope to foster statewide in the face of what's expected to be growing pressure on Montana's water supplies. We know the problem's there. We're not just going to turn and run or try to run it over by one special entity, but come together and work towards fixing it, because we're all in this valley to gather. It's been a bit of a challenge, but I think we've learned a lot and can hopefully share that in other uh, growth areas in the state. Sales and many others will preach that gospel next week at Montana's first state water summit. The summit is sold out with 300 participants. Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney, who chairs the governor's drought advisory committee, says the summit will showcase and encourage local efforts to anticipate and deal with water shortages. If you haven't done it, if you haven't started having these discussions, you need to start doing it because you don't want to wait for a crisis to occur. Cooney says top-down solutions aren't the answer and points to how Gallatin County water users are working together to solve water shortages in the state's fastest growing county. He says the summit also will feature information on the changing climate, which makes water shortages increasingly likely into the future. Even if we have a great snowpack, even if it looks like it's going to melt off when we want it to, we still need to have these conversations because we will have drought. It's not a matter of if we will, it's when the drought will come and how do we make sure that our communities are best prepared to deal with it. Cooney, Sales and others also say they're certain about something else. 
This issue isn't going away anytime soon. As development continues here in Gallatin County, water is a precious commodity here and all across the state. But next week's Water Summit looks to find common ground for all water users and still keep the Big Sky State as beautiful and prosperous as ever. Mike Dennison, MTN News on the Gallatin River. The two-day summit opens on Tuesday in Helena. And weather has uh, also led to ranchers uh, needing some hay around the state. Montana Department of Agriculture is asking agriculture producers for donations on the Northern Cheyenne and Fort Belknap Indian Reservations. The Montana Hay Hotline is available online. That link uh, is on your screen there, and the tool shows uh, what is available and helps make uh, new listings for hay sales. Meanwhile, the Montana Highway Patrol welcomed four new troopers on Friday morning. The four new uh, troopers received graduation certificates and badges after weeks of training at the MHP Advanced Academy. Attorney General Tim Fox and MHP Colonel Tom Butler helped honor the graduates. Trooper Calvin Jimerson from Billings spoke on behalf of the class. I'm just uh, overwhelmed by the support that we've had here for graduation and, and just up to this point, uh, the last six months of training, uh, there's so many people that are behind law enforcement and it means a lot. All four of the new troopers will serve initially in eastern Montana. And it's a red carpet event. The annual art auction is underway in Billings tonight. Work from 131 artists is up for sale, including one iconic artist's work. Q2's Asia Gore is there and joins us with more. Good evening, I'm here at the Yellowstone Art Museum's golden 50th anniversary of its annual art auction. Tonight is tons of food, beautiful artwork, and even a Picasso is up for bid tonight. I'm joined by the brand new executive director of the Yellowstone Art Museum, Brian Nicely. And Brian, you haven't even started the job yet, but tonight here you are welcoming uh, your career here in Montana with a big bang. What's that like for you? It's just an incredible experience being here and being witness of this anniversary of that and seeing all the wonderful people here that are out to actually bid on these great pieces of artwork for a great cause. Uh, seeing kind of the, the vibe here tonight and how excited everyone is and just how beautiful this 50th anniversary auction is, uh, witnessing that and knowing that that's what you have to look forward to for years to come, what's that like for you? It really is an honor. I mean, to see the artwork that's from this region, the people here supporting this institution, I think, you know, the fact that it's run for 50 years really speaks volumes about the, the generosity of this community. All right, well, we sure look forward to seeing how much the yam can raise tonight and just how many different pieces will come through the auction. It'll be really exciting. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so for uh, MTN News, I'm Asia Gore here in Billings. I'll send it back to you. And the artists uh, donate between 50 and 100 percent of the selling price on all artwork sold. Anyone who has driven on Montana highways uh, has seen the majesty of the state's mountains from the road, and now that experience can be enhanced. The Glove Box Guide to Recognizing Montana's Mountains is the first ever pictorial field guide about the state's mountain ranges. Artist Gary Little saw a lack of resources on the subject and came up with his guide. So I started driving to look at all the mountain ranges just to see. When I went to the state library to ask for a resource and they didn't have one, I said, maybe I'll make one. And the, the person there said, good luck with that. You know, no one's ever tried that. That's a lot. You know, that's 56 mountain ranges. Um, it was a lot. I wore out two cars, and uh, it took me six years. And Little's artwork can be seen in galleries, museums, and hospitals around the state. Some Red Lodge uh, traditions have helped bring about a much bigger event, the two-week Winterfest. Red Lodge Mountain hosted its winter carnival. The best engineered vehicles uh, competed in the Cardboard Classic. Winterfest started Friday and finishes with the National Finals uh, ski join races at the Red Lodge Fairgrounds on Sunday, March 11th. 